Okay, what is going on everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It is your host TKK here, and we are back with another tournament replay analysis. And you read that title right. Today, uh, we are looking at, battle, at a battle that I had for the Black and White Premier League uh, against... I think arguably the best black and white little cup player. It goes in between my opponent here, ISS, and my friend, Fee. And, you know, for title purposes, I just said that ISS is the greatest, right? <laughs> um, but Fee is obviously a very, very strong player. And I think it goes between the two of them. I'm sure Bully is also up there uh, in terms of, like, best black and white little cup players. Either way, um, this tournament, Black and White Premier League, is like the other tournaments uh, that you guys have been watching if you haven't been following the other videos. Um, it is a Premier League just based off of the black and white generation. So there's, like, four or three OU slots, then, you know, UU, Ubers, RU, NU, PU, Little Cup, ZU. Uh, it's a pretty large tour tournament. I actually didn't have the time to go and do a recap of all those videos. I didn't think there'd be a lot of interest, and I wasn't playing, and I just didn't have the time for it. But I did want to cover this game, because this is the very first time I got subbed in. The very first, the first three weeks or so, I was, um, I just wasn't play. I wasn't playing. I was a little bit busy, and some other people wanted to play Little Cup, so that was fine. And then eventually, I got subbed in week three, and I was faced against ISS. So I was not looking forward to that. Well, I was looking forward to it in the sense that it would be a tough opponent. I wanted to see if I could uh, take him on, but it was also going to be a very, very challenging battle. So that's all the context you guys really need. I ended up playing in week four as well, and I will cover that game um, just because I do enjoy Black and White Little Cup. I think it's a really great tier, but. That's enough for the context background. Let's get into the actual game. So um, I'm using a team that Fee passed over to me. I was like, hey, I'm playing ISS. I need your help. <laughs> so he gave me this team that's actually pretty neat. It's built around Nasty Plot Vullaby with a Trick Scarf Abra, actually. So the idea is that Abra can force a trick onto stuff like Porygon as Porygon in this generation is very very bulky it's like the premier bulky Pokemon it can take any hit basically it feels like and it is one of the roadblocks that Volibee has to face so for me I was like okay um, I'm gonna use I see a Porygon right off the bat and I want to use my Abra to trick that early to set up for my Volibee sweep um, at the other hand, or on the other side of the table, we see that ISS is bringing up very handed, very handed, very standard, excuse me, Hail Core here with Smoochum plus Snover. So I knew I was going to have to face off against like a Scarf Smoochum with a, um, and you know, have to handle its Blizzard. So that was kind of problematic. I know my Mianfu can take one, Chinchou obviously can handle Blizzards, but doesn't want to take those repeatedly because it gets worn down. Um, one thing to note, and I, one thing I did note from team preview is that Abra once if I can successfully trick the Porygon on the switch I get an Aviolite and with the Aviolite from 100% health I can actually live one Smoochum Blizzard so that's also in the back of my head because when you're facing Hail you really need to be able to think about how you're going to handle Blizzard Smoochum because it's just so problematic I'm using a Life Orb Ghastly as well with Sucker Punch with just enough EVs to one hit KO uh, Smoochum as well so um yeah so um that's kind of my thought process behind this game. I have my Life Orb Ghastly, which actually looks really, really threatening, especially if I can get that Trick Scarf off early. So I really like the I like I like that odd, I like those odds as well. Um, I do have a Toxic Chinchou, which should be able to hopefully uh, get a Toxic off on something like Porygon or Mianfu or Snover. Really would be nice just to put that thing on a timer. Frillish as well. I think Snover and Frillish are my biggest targets. But basically, what I'm trying to do is set up for a potential Volibi sweep, although I don't really like my odds because in this generation, weak armor only gives you a plus one speed boost. So I don't even outspeed Scarf Smoochum and I still have to be wary of Ice Shard from the Snover as well. Um, so I'm not, unless I can remove those somehow, then maybe Volibi can sweep. But more importantly, I really like the odds of my Ghastly just because it's Sludge Bomb hits this team extremely hard and Shadow Ball following up on that is also really hard to hit. So I like that. Um, basically, my thought process with the very first turn of the game is I'm going to lead Abra because I know he's going to lead off with Mianfu. Mianfu just generally a good lead, covers most of my options. Um, and by leading Abra, I can bait in the Porygon because he's not going to risk any inner focus stuff. I don't think it's very common in this generation, but it's not a risk worth taking. Um, He's not gonna folk, he's not gonna fake out. And even if he does fake me out, let's say, I can just trick the next turn anyway. I'm willing to take that damage. It wouldn't be I it wouldn't be ideal because as I said, I want to keep my Abra at full health for taking potentially one blizzard from Smoochum, but I know 
that the opponent's good enough to not risk something stupid like that. So I'm going to lead off with Abra to hopefully trick the Porygon turn one, get my Violet, cripple that, and set up for the rest of the game, uh, basically. So I think this is actually a really well-played game um, from both ends. It was really, really tight, and it comes down to the wire. So let's get into it. We are going to see the Mianfu lead as I end head anticipated versus Abra lead. I'm going to trick right off the bat. Um, also, one thing to note, I really wanted to record this live, but I was traveling, so I had to play this in like the parking lot of a restaurant because um, I wasn't home yet uh, on time for a scheduled game. So that's why this wasn't recorded live, but I still wanted to cover this. So anyways, I do get the trick off <laughs> very, very early. Uh, I get my Violite and I cripple the Porygon. So objective number one is in play. Uh, at this point, I'm going to just switch out into Chinchou because I know I can take any one hit. If my opponent wants a T-Wave, that's going to be absorbed. If they just Ice Beam Psychic, anything really I can handle. Toxic would be a little annoying, but not the end of the world as they end up doubling into Frillish here. So I'm like, this is actually kind of a good situation. They're probably just going to recover on my Volt Switch um, and so I can get a Toxic off. Unfortunately, I end up missing there, which means that this Frillish is going to be a little bit more annoying because my opponent is going to miss a Wisp. So like, it's fine. I figured they would either, you know, Wisp or recover because I can only really hit them with the Volt Switch. It's not very likely for me to run Thunderbolt on this team. So now I'm going to click th I'm gonna click Toxic again. Maybe I should just Volt Switch on this turn, trying to get momentum, but I figured just in case my opponent really wanted to Toxic my Chinchou, or sorry, with my Chinchou, then I could get the Toxic off, but it's probably not a fair trade for them. So um, they end up going Foo. Poisoning that is okay. I don't have Wisp or anything on my Ghastly, I don't think. So it's not like I was going to hit this on any, any other status. So I guess it's okay in my eyes as... Uh, I'm just going to Volt Switch on this. I'm going to protect once, trying to catch them on an HJK, you know, just to be cheeky. Also wear down a little bit of toxic damage, and then um, go for a Volt Switch on this turn. As I do see that I'm faster, my Chinchou is 14 speed, so I'm anticipating them to either be the standard 13 speed spread. Um, so I'm going to Volt Switch, I'm going to go into my own Mianfu. I don't really mind whatever they go for, U-Turn, Knock, whatever. I just kind of have to accept it, as they are going to go into Frillish. And I know this is bait at this point, um, and... My thought process is here is like, you know, my opponent's trying to bait out my knock so they can remove the item on the Porygon. Um, so my thought process was, okay, I know the Porygon's coming in. I can HJK here for sure, but I actually wanted to keep the Porygon trick scarfed because if it locks into a bad move, it gives me a free setup opportunity potentially with Volibee in the late game, or it gives me just a free turn with like Ghastly or Abra or something, you know, like it, it can bring the breaker in. So for me, it didn't make sense to kill this thing. It made more sense to just U-turn on it and then kind of go from there. So I know my opponent's going to go into Porygon here. It doesn't make sense for them to just give up a Frillish of Violite and I'm just going to U-turn on this turn. So I get that turn right. I'm pretty happy with how I played that didn't fall for that bait i'm gonna go chin chow now because i want to see what my opponent wants to go for i'm just gonna go for a volt switch i didn't think maybe i should just protect it on this turn but it's fine <laughs> as it is volt switch and i'm gonna go into my porygon this is probably like, this is probably a, a slight kind of weird play maybe i could have just protected it, but it's fine as they end up toxicking me porygon getting toxic is not ideal because i kind of needed to take hits from snover smoochum etc so that's not great but it's okay as snover of their own is going to come in and i'm going to pivot ghastly on this turn uh and you know double toxic it's a fine turn for me from here i'm pretty confident they are not going to be uh scarf blizzard but for me, it's not a risk worth taking. I'd rather just pivot into my Chinchou and see what they go for. They end up going for Protect, so I know they're not Scarf anymore. My Ghastly is a very, very big asset for me, so I don't want to risk that early versus a potential. Somehow, like this is end up being a Scarf, Scarf Snowbird plus Scarf Smoochum, which doesn't make sense, but you know, you can never rule that out until you see it. So I'm going to Volt Switch here. Again, I'm faster, so I know that there's probably 14 or 13 speed. Um, I'm going to Volt Switch into my Foo as my opponent makes the Blizzard play, and I end up taking 50% from that. So not great damage, but it's okay as I'm getting chipped down by hail and all that, they're just gonna second blizzard as I end up just going for a U-turn. I don't want to HJK into Frillish, really, really, really don't want that to happen because I just lose my Mianfu. So they make the right play and go for another blizzard because they know that I'm not gonna risk something stupid like that. So that was really nice on his end because now my Mianfu is very low. I have to figure out how to regen this thing back up to full. I do know that, I, you know, I do get a safe switch into my Ghastly, which is really good because I can just click Sludge Bomb and start putting in work. So they're gonna protect here, right, you know, correctly. Uh, force a little bit more hail chip. Now they're going to go into Porygon, which is going to trace my Levitate. Sludge Bomb is going to be a clean 2-8 KO. Even though they have a Scarf, um, I outspeed just because, um, as you can see, my Ghastly was hit first. So I can just click Sludge Bomb again. They're, they're 10 speeds. So they're merely at 15 with a Scarf, and I'm 18 Ghastly. So that knock, that gets knocked out. Maybe, you know, maybe HJKing early would have been a better flex play, you know, because I end up killing this thing anyway. I don't end up setting up on it. But the, the problem with that is like HJKing into Frillish is just like kind of a crazy, crazy move to make. So I, I agree with my U-turn play uh, on the previous turn. Anyways, I claim the first kill of the battle as I'm getting Hail Chip, Life Orb Chip and all that. They are going to go into Smooch him now. And I do have the Life Orb Sucker Punch. So I didn't, 
I, I end up going for it um, as my opponent either scouts that and also covers for like a switch into like Chin Chow, which I think is a really, really nice play. Or uh, yeah, I think he's probably scouting for Chin Chow or Porygon, like covering by uh, going for. So he's scouting for the Sucker Punch, but he's also covering a switch into Chin Chow or maybe uh, Porygon. So that was a nice play on his end. Uh, as he, I do kind of reveal my my tech here um, of Sucker Punch, which is an unfortunate. It would have been really nice to get that kill, but it's fine because Ghastly is still very valuable. I'm just going to go into Porygon here because I don't really have a great switch in. My Mianfu is very low and I'm pretty confident they're just going to get rocks up on this turn. So, or they may. I, I obviously <laughs> misread that, but I figured I can take that hit and I should be fine. So at this point, I just want damage because my, my Shadow Ball doesn't knock them out yet. Um... So I just want damage on this thing so I can just knock them out with Shadow Ball on the next turn. So they do, they do get the rocks up, which is fine. I do get a nice freeze here, which actually enables me to just save this Porygon as a sack. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm looking back on this, I thought of this mattered more, but it doesn't really because, yes, I do get a free kill on the Drill Bird, but my Porygon doesn't really get used at any other point in the game. It just uses a sack, um, which I guess is nice. It is always good to preserve a sack, so I'm not going to deny that. Um, either way, Ice Beam knocks them out. And uh, I get chipped down to 50%, but Porygon is still pretty valuable because it can take a hit, it can be used as a sack, as I mentioned. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sack it here. I'm just gonna go into Fu because I'm very confident that they're not gonna HJK into Ghastly. It's very unnecessarily risky, especially bringing my Ghastly in for free. I get a Shadow Ball into this team. Like it's really, really bad for them. So they're just gonna U-turn or knock, um, and I want to cover that with uh, my Mianfu. And I figured they just want to U-turn because they'd probably want to bring in their Smoochum or something. And I want to bring in my Mianfu in so I can regen and get out of range of, you know, Blizzard. So that's kind of thought process here. They go into Snover um, as I think on this turn, I just go into my Porygon. They end up making a good play and just Giga Draining. Uh, so they get quite a bit of health back, which is a little annoying, but it's fine. So I end up just sacking this. Giga Drain again, knock me out. So I, I suffer the second KO, uh, or the, the first KO on my end, third KO in the entire battle. I'm going to go Ghastly now. They are just going to uh, protect. I'm still, at this point, I'm still out of range of Ice Shard. Um, it's not a guaranteed move on the Snover, but it's pretty likely Blizzard Giga Drain protect. It could be HP Fire Toxic, but um, I'm still out of range. This is the reason why I went to Ghastly, because I can claim another kill. So I'm going to go for Sludge Bomb here. They're going to go into Fu. I'm just going to go for Sludge Bomb, claim a very clean 2 KO. They can't, they can't, you know whatever you call it, um, fake me out or anything because I'm a uh, ghost type. So we're looking really, really good at this point. But the problem is that Snover plus Moochum is still very, very problematic. So uh, they're going to Ice Shard me now. I could have Sucker Punched on this turn um, and just gotten some chip damage. Like the way they brought it in, I should have just Suckered because like that's the reason they brought it in. Um, they don't have any other options. So I could have probably tried to preserve the Ghastly, but I was like, I don't really see the use at this point because they can just... I can, I don't know. I, yeah, I probably should have just suckered on this turn. It's not guaranteed for them to be Ice Shard, but the way they brought it in, it's pretty clear. And even if they, you know, let's say switch out into like Smoochum or something, like we just click Sucker Punch again, like we're, we're fine, right? So Ghastly gets sacked, that's fine. The problem with this is that they are getting relatively uh, healthy with all the Giga Drain and stuff, so, and they're not getting chipped by Hail. So on this turn, I'm going to go for an Air Slash. I really wanted to Dark Pulse on this turn, but this Nova is too big of a threat for me to risk that. So I'm just going to go for Air Slash as I need to keep my Volibee around because it's the one thing that's preventing me from losing to Psychic. Because Blizzard, I actually have, you know, well, it's not the one thing. I obviously have Abra, but like Blizzard, I have a couple of resists for, but Psychic actually starts to hit my team very hard. So I need to keep my Volibee around. They're going to read that very well and double into Snover, anticipating a switch. That was a really nice play on their end because they're not going to Psychic a Volibee. They're going to Blizzard the Volibee. So I go Chin Chow. They read that and go Snover. Really nice play on their end. Um, at this point, I'm kind of at a tough. I'm kind of in a tough spot, so I do Volt Switch again. Get a nice crit. Won't deny that. As I'm going to go into Fu, and they are just going to Giga Drain and get themselves back to a fair amount of health. They end up taking a pretty. I don't know if it was a risk because Ice Shard just knocks me out. Um, so I think this this was a speed tie, if I remember correctly, or maybe it wasn't. Um, either way, they end up just going for the Giga Drain. Giga Drain and knocking me out. Uh, maybe it wasn't a speed tie. For some reason, I thought this was a speed tie, but maybe not. Either way, they knock me out, which is fine because what this enables me to do is just go back into Volibee and basically uh, click the air slash button again. So they're going to protect, force a little bit more chip. That's fine. I'm going to air slash, knock them out now. So down goes the Snover. Now they're going to go into Smoochum, which again, I have to preserve uh, as best as possible. So I'm going to go into Chinchow. Even if they Psychic, all that enables me is to go into my Volibee, click Roost, and then Dark Pulse away and kind of win the game-ish. So I'm going to eat that with um, 
Chin Chow, and I just go for a Vol Switch here because I want to bring my Volibi back in to roost it up and get it to the because I need to preserve it. Remember, Psychic is looking threatening, and uh, they're not going to risk bringing Smoochum in on a Dark Pulse. That would be crazy. So they're going to go for a Wisp here. That's fine. Uh, at this point, I can start Dark Pulsing away a little bit because um, even with the even though the fact that they can recover it off, they're taking Hail Chip, which actually works in my favor. So they're losing 1% or 1 HP per turn. So I can just continue to click Dark Pulse. And I've perfectly preserved my Abra to live one hit from the Smoochum. And I actually still have the backup of my Chin Chow being able to live one hit from the Smoochum as well. So they're in range of the third Dark Pulse. So I'm just going to go for it here, knocking them out altogether. Down it goes. And now they're going to go into Volby, or sorry, they're going to go into Smoochum, and it's this moment of truth, you know, I just have to not get frozen. Uh, so I'm going to go sack the Volby, and, you know, I have the 100% win besides the 10% chance. I'm going to go Abra. I preserve the Violet, played it pretty nicely, and I get frozen, <laughs> which is pretty terrifying. So now I'm like, okay, I have to get a high roll with my Surf. So I go into my Chincha, which I did keep just in case for this as best as I could. I end up living with one HP, I high roll the Surf, and I win the game. <laughs> so pretty crazy game, very, very fun one. Uh, really fun to be able to play like such a strong player and pick up a win. Um, pretty happy with how I played it all together. I think front to back, I played a pretty clean game. Obviously there's some optimizations I could have made and maybe some reads I could have done better, but at the end of the day, ISS was also making really solid reads and there's not much you can do about it sometimes because he's just he just has that understanding and grasp for the tier and for the game so it was a pretty fun one i hope you guys enjoyed this a little bit of a shorter video but i definitely wanted to highlight this game and uh let me know if you guys are interested in seeing the next black and white little cup game i'll still probably upload it but it'd be nice to hear if someone else wanted to see it as well anyways i think we'll leave it at that uh if you guys enjoyed please leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one take care and goodbye